Greetings, children, and welcome to another episode of Rotor Riot, where the ghouls and the beasts come out at night, and you get scared until you pop your pants. Hey guys, welcome to Rotor Riot. I have recently had the chance to spend a bit of time over in China and while I was there I was invited to a couple of the manufacturers and they allowed me to basically get my camera in there and film the manufacturing process. So where we're starting off with today is Brother Hobby. So Brother Hobby, you will be familiar with yes, the, uh, the R3 made... and the R4 returner motors, the Hyperlite motors, the Tornado series. They were keen to get me out there and show me the manufacturing uh, area. Oh, this is pretty cool. I'm really interested. So basically, we're going to do a little something different today. Today is more of like uh, how it's made. I don't know about you, but I've, I've always been curious about how yeah. one of these guys are made because we work on these all the time and uh, it could definitely be a pain in the ass. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really curious to see some, how fast these the guys make them. Yeah. Right? I guess what I was trying to achieve as well is these guys are in, a long way away in a different country, a different culture, a different language. In a way, they probably struggle to communicate to their customer base at the same time as we probably struggled to give input back to them. For me, this is a good uh, portal to get the information across to help show you guys how your favorite FPV stuff is made. Right. So you just walked up to Brother Hobby and he was like, yo, where's the party at? And then what happened? Welcome to Brother Hobby! I got to basically get a tour of the factory. The first thing here, if we look at this first section here, the common theme here, cleanliness. So you mean when you opened the door, it wasn't just like some crazy sweatshop with like a whole no. bunch of... No, uh... See, this is good. This is yeah. the people that... I, I know people are making this assumption and it's it's just not that. The it's manufacturing just... facilities here, with in all honesty, make a lot of the Western manufacturing facilities look so almost was, like a joke. So, so that was just for your shoe? You got yeah. like a little booty? Yeah, yeah, so you put, your, you put your feet in and it... This is interesting. This is where they, they, they said, okay, we're going to show you this separate area here. So, so this, is, this is the QC area. Slow that time now. So much for QC. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite funny. They dropped them all and they're like, ah, oh, now we're going we to throw them out. Well, at least you threw them out. Yeah, yeah. He's in no, the back going, yeah, oh, yeah well, we'll you say something. <laughs> now, these, this was a really impressive area. So what they, this whole room, this area here, is purely for testing and QC. So the stators uh, and the shafts are outsourced, so they yeah. get them. They're doing, another, they're doing another check. Pretty much every single thing that they get there goes through their own rigorous testing. So in this part here, this is the test. This is the machine where they actually test the hardness of the shaft. Well, what it does is it gets this diamond encrusted tool and it basically just presses into it and it just uh, works out exactly how hard the product is. So not only do they get a certain quality, quality specification for the motors when they're, when they're outsourcing the product, but they don't just take the manufacturer that they got it from's word. They, they do it themselves. Yeah, they also do their own QC to ensure that because I'm sure these guys are fully aware that when you get a motor and something goes wrong, you're going to tell Facebook and every single person that wants to listen that you're not happy. Even though this motor only costs maybe 20 bucks or something like that, you're not happy. And these, oh, yeah. it, here we go. This is, this is the ring on the bell that gets put on the top of the bell yep. and then the magnets go inside of that. So yep. they get that designed by a certain manufacturer. But then they go and test these things yeah. to make I, sure that they fit. The, here's their specifications and what they will accept and what they won't accept and that kind of thing. Is that millimeter? And me, millimeter. These guys are within a tolerance of 0.01 of a millimeter. For your imperial people, it's really small. That's just like the responsible thing to do. If you're not the person doing the manufacturing, you can't yeah. just take somebody else's word for it. Yeah. That's huge. Like yeah. that, that ups a lot of things for me for Brother Hobby. So kudos to you guys, Brother yeah. Hobby. So first place that we oh, went to here is the stator winding area. You got the raw stator and then they've got the, uh, the, the windings that come through a spool and this machine here what it does is it 
spins and then also turns the stator. So it'll wind each individual stator or, uh, individually and turns it around and then you end up with the finished product there. Oh, that's super cool. I think what that one was there, possibly a run of their, the R3, those blue R3 returner, 2206, 2300 KV. So that's still in demand even though the R4 they're, they're still making that. So basically the machine there, it's a program machine. So you basically put the specs in it and it knows that, okay, you're putting this kind of a, a stator in there and it needs to do this kind of winding and this many winds. It'll basically get, they'll do a run of that. Gotcha. So, so you're not telling the machine, I, I want this KV. You're telling it the wind and the resulting after that is... Exactly. Yeah. Because it's the number of winds that on, determines on the, the stator that, that determines the KV. Yeah. So Look at that. Yeah. That is super yeah. cool actually. So you can see it's got a spindle where it turns the stator and there's basically little, the teeth in there guide the wire and then it spins it around. So it just knows how many yeah. poles there are. Yeah. That's cool. So that winding part is auto is automated, but actually placing the, the stator on there is still a manual process. Yeah, so you've got one person there, so they're gonna basically put the put the stator on there, get it all started, and you'll see here when it Whoops. comes out. Oh, so that's the excess? Yeah, that's the excess. Top. So for all you guys that like to wind your own stators, that's how the pros do it. Uh, once the stators are wound, it comes over there where they clean up the, the stator wires. So they shorten them and they basically just give it a, a QC check, getting them ready for the next process, which is tinning them. So this is the part where the individual wires actually, this is what goes to the ESC now. Yes. So one thing here that they're showing, that's like a, an, an enamel type paint. They paint over the surface of the windings to help protect it and also stop it from vibrating and wearing out the enamel and touching it and shorting it out this is where they start to tin the uh, the stator wires so that they can add the silicon wire on top of that so basically what this is is some molten lead uh, and they've added the flux on there beforehand they are just prepping the wires and tinning uh, the, the stator wires so that they're ready to have the wire actually added to them uh, do you remember back in the Cobra days when if you yeah. want if it was too short, that's what you were dealing with? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. hated that. I hate, I'm so glad that is, they're doing this. Yeah, so they're, they're <laughs> doing that right from the factory yeah. time and time again. So what they then do is they get the batch that they've done and then they stick it in uh, an oven. I think it, it's like 110 degrees Celsius for two hours, I think it is, to bake and cure. And then they go on to the process of adding the silicon wires. In this section here, you can see they're actually doing a different run here. Whoa, that's These a big are, motor. They're, they're actually uh, the brushless powered skateboards. Oh, um, they make those motors Oh yeah, too? they make a whole heap of different motors uh, and they made all these motors long before they got into made the, quad motors. So they've yeah. been around for a while. Now they're adding the silicon wire to the stator. Ah, to make life easier. Yeah. They've added the silicon wire. The stator is completely finished and what they're doing is they're adding, that was like a Loctite type of glue on the inside of the stator and on the outside of the base and then they join the stator and the base together. The stator is actually under a, a fair bit of load. Right. Um, if it twists on the base then the motor's not going to work very well so yeah i don't know the exact uh, name of some of these glues and products because it's sort of lost in translation oh is this where they press in the they drink? basically know that oh, they're, they're pressing yet. the stator onto the base oh, gotcha that needs to be at a certain height on the base and that needs to be quite accurate because the magnets need to line up with the stator what he's doing there is he's basically pressing the stator to the certain to the correct height and to the correct tolerances onto the base and then he's basically just giving it um, a bit of a visual QC and cleaning up any excess glue residue around the whole thing. Ah, so that's why I see yes. when they have, um, when they got the shafts at the bottom end of the C-clip, there's normally, sometimes you see one washer, yep. sometimes you see two, and that's for, uh, I'm guessing this exact yeah. That, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of shimming there afterwards. Which yeah. We'll talk about it at a later stage. So basically, what these guys are testing here is it's basically a continuity check to make sure that that, yeah. that you can get a decent current through the wires that it's not going to fail under a reasonable load. And they're talking about 500 volts that they're putting this through. That's a lot. To of in, volts. ensure it. I mean, it, but the current's probably not. Yeah, that. the current's not very high, so it's not too much of a problem. But they're just checking. It's a continuity check, and you can see the ones on top there. They actually failed. Uh, they were still of current through there but not to the specifications of them uh, uh, and I did ask them what do you do with them and they say we throw them out mm. so once again you can only take their word for it but did you ask them how many how often well happens? just as I was there one got put on the top there now we have the resistance check this is kind of like a battery 
almost. Checking resistance. Yeah. It's basically just another QC check on resistance this time. So, of mm -hmm. course, too high resistance, and it's not going to have the performance that they're looking for. Now is this the bearings? Yes, now. Fine. So this is the bearings <laughs> area. So they put a bearing in the top and a bearing in the bottom, and both bearings are inserted at the same time. Wow, and this is a manual deal, huh? Yeah. Have so you ever changed out a bearing before? I have. It's not fun. It's yeah. And I did ask them about QC for their bearings. Basically, the biggest thing that they came across to me is they're just very picky about who and what specification types of bearings that they mm -hmm. buy. That's the best that they can do. Apart from when where they actually wind the motor up and they listen audibly, that's about the best that they can do with bearings because it's a sealed product. There's, n there's not really much more you can do about that. Right. This was actually the part that I was most interested in about uh, because it was the most unknown to me. What they're doing is they're fitting the, the, the ring to the belt and they're also adding what looked like to me to be a, um, a contact adhesive style glue which is very different uh, they put that on the inside of the bell and then they add the magnets to that is it the bell and then there's a ring that slides over the bell or yes. is, the, is the ring becomes part of the bell no, it's two separate parts. It's basically a press fit and the ring sort of slides over the bell. So there's like little teeth or whatever. Yeah. Every design is slightly different, but it's basically a press fit. Oh, so you, you can see here. Oh, look at that. And they have a, a special jig yep. just for yeah. the design of that bell. And yeah, these are all specific to each model. So oh, there you go. Now yeah. I see. Okay, that makes sense. I always thought that that was one single piece. Yeah, so they have to be different bits. So for example, the bell itself needs to be a magnetic type material because of the design of it. So mm -hmm. that's why the bell is a it's steel. Yeah. So it, it, it's always going to be that. Where if you made the top of the bell steel as well, it'd be too heavy. Right. Okay, Ooh, this is the interesting is, bit. What is this? This, magnets. So you've got each one what? here, you've got, you've got, you've got a, a, a thing of magnets which go in there. The magnets themselves are basically, there's a little bit of a, there's a die, like a, a mold thing in there where the magnets are held. And you put the bell and the ring in there, and you press you press a button with your foot, and this thing comes up and basically just pushes the magnets out, pushes it against the contact adhesive glue, comes back up again, and then the person does one more check with a little die tool on the inside of it, just to make sure that there's it, the tolerances are all correct. That's pretty sweet, because yeah. I cannot imagine having to put one of those magnets magnets individually yeah. so hand there you, by go. Hand. you can see in here you can see all the magnets yeah that's pretty cool puts that in there presses a button and it pops it done and then the new ones pop back out again yeah it's like a yeah. bunch of a staplers yes basically yeah it's like <laughs> staples you here's all the magnets yeah, that looks exactly yeah. like a stapler when you yeah, load it up it basically is but they're, they're not even joined because they're, they're mag magnetic yeah so, you so have they to just worry go straight in that's crazy so these are all the n52 arc magnets that's what brother hobby uses in all of its motors they said to me i found it really interesting no that's super cool <laughs> okay next Ooh, this is, what is this, this is the here? balancing machine they had a stator and a base permanently mounted to this machine and what they did was they just basically dropped the bell on without any bolt on there because they didn't need it to be bolted on. First of all they painted like with a, a white marker on the side of the bell and what it did was it spun it up and it knew where the little white dot was that they put on there so it knew at what part of the bell was out of balance and there was a little LCD screen that said, okay, over here is the part that's out of balance and it's this much out of balance. And then what the workers would do is they'd get this paste and they've obviously been doing it for a while because they just they worked out just by knowing how much out of balance it would and they'd add a little bit of paste did they did they ever tell you like how is there ever any emo a motor that's just good or are they always pretty much off balance to be honest, I didn't have to ask the question, but I would assume that pretty much every single motor, with the exception of a very rare occurrence, is going to need some uh, a little bit of yeah, look, look right there. Yeah. So, so they're putting it in there. There's tiny little, there. this tiny little bit amount, and I'm just sitting there so watching now, them. Like you oh can see, gosh. these people have done this so many times; they know exactly how much to put in there. So I mean, I know you've balanced the motor before. I balanced the motor before. Yep. That's why I'm, I'm cringing when I see. Well, this is probably a hell of a lot easier than what we used to do because yeah, we would guess. Uh, it was. It was. Get, <laughs> we we had to guess. We just, yeah. We would just put pieces of tape to see yeah. where if it got better, but they at least and got something. But this yeah, has like got to be painstakingly tw twenty seconds, cumbersome. Twenty seconds, and it's perfectly balanced out the door for the next one. See, seeing this like makes you appreciate like how much work goes into something like a motor, which sucks because the motor is like the first thing that gets thrashed on a mini quad. Yep, exactly. <laughs> next to props, obviously. After the balancing procedure is the final assembly area. Now, this is where you're going to have to watch my actions as I describe everything. In this final assembly, what they were actually assembling was some OEM motors, ah. uh, and they didn't want me filming that. So essentially what, what they've got now is they've got 
the base with the stator on there, the wires put through there, that's all gone through the QC check. Right. They've got the bell uh, and the uh, the ring put together with the magnets in there, the shaft is all in there, it's the all ready to go. In there. The bearings in there ready to go. So now it's a matter of joining the two parts. Then there is a person that's putting the spacer and the bolt or the circlip or whatever you're putting the in there. Uh, and the, the shim itself depends on the mode of design. If it's got a shim, because some of them don't of course, he actually had a number of boxes of shims so he was putting the correct shim on there to basically get rid of that uh, the the vertical plate and, and the slop out of out of the bell. Once they've put it together then they put it on a test machine where they actually run it up on a machine checking for vibrations, also checking for noisy bearings, anything like that. So basically it's just a, a visual and, and an audio type check so it's nothing special apart from someone is just spinning it up and then once that's done that's why then it gets put off to one side and that's when they do the final packaging and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the one thing that's still yet to do is to put the, um, the logo on the side of the ring. That was the one area that they didn't show me. How did they, I, I didn't actually know I, this. So they do that last? I would have guessed that that would have been well, like one of the I'm first I'm assuming they did it last. That's on. the one area that I didn't see. If that was actually the, the thing that you were waiting out for, I do apologize, but I have no <laughs> idea. How, I think it basically, I'm, it magically happens in the box. No, no, it's kind I'm of like disappointed. A, I don't want to even do this anymore, I'm not going to see it. it. Basically what it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a caterpillar. It's like a caterpillar. It goes inside a cocoon, and then it sits there and it gestates for about three months, and then it comes out a beautiful butterfly. I don't believe you. So all summed up, that is the essential manufacturing process of a motor, of a the way motor. That, That's cool. that Brother Hobby does it. The one thing that really, I really took away from this whole experience was the general QC, uh, the cleanliness of everything uh, was very, very impressive. I, I agree, and the thing that impressed me the most was the fact that they were they had implemented a QC process for a part that they don't manufacture before they even put it on. Yeah. That, that to me speaks worlds because that's probably one of the first things that I would imagine other companies would just cut. I've had a lot of other manufacturers invite me to various places which I haven't been able to go to yet. In future episodes, I really want to visit a lot of these these other companies as well, not just Brother Hobby. There are a couple of other companies which I've already got some good footage from which I want to share with you guys through Rotor Right. I don't know about you guys, let us know. We're just always trying something new here at Rotor Right, and yep. I, I'm a big fan of how it's made. I don't know if anybody out there watches it, but I enjoyed watching this, and if you guys did as well, let us know. Put it down in the comments, hit that like button. Um, we can send Mr. Uh, Final Glide over here off to China and check out how other things are made. I know I'm definitely interested in it, uh, yeah. but if you guys are interested in it, that's the most important, so let us know, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Peace out. I win. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs>